Thank you, Amy. Our next speaker is widely renowned bioartist Adam Zaretsky. His work focuses on materials and methods of biotechnology, and he's a PhD <coughs> candidate at Prince Hilaire Polytechnic Institute. Please welcome Adam Zaretsky. Oh, sure. For the, yeah. um, well, hi, this has been really fun so far. Uh, let me see if I can get my notes on there. Um, hello. I am a bioartist, which is, uh, for the most part, what that means is that we're making art from life, with life, for life, um, sometimes all at once. Um, and uh, I have to say, like, I have a love-hate relationship with transhumanism. Um, <laughs> I, first of all, I love life the way it is. I also love life the way it's uh, been becoming for some time, and I don't mind the idea of messing it up in different directions. I think that's just that's just humans um, being nature and drag. Um, I also want to die. Like I'm really happy to be mortal, and uh, this immortalist stuff is just like, well, I know we can have backups, but if you get hit by a bus, you get hit by a bus even if you're immortal. And yeah, I don't know. I I, uh, I also am into transgenic transhumanism, which is to say um, what I call transgenic hereditary cascade embryological developmental biology arts, <laughs> which is just to say I like the idea of messing with living life, which is also sort of saying I'm a little bit anti-AI as life. Um, not totally, but yeah, I like the flesh. I just really like the flesh. I'm here, I'm earthbound, I'm muddy. I'm art-based, which means that I also don't like this sort of talk about um, progress and reason mixed with optimism. I'm optimistic, you can tell already, right? But I, I, even though I'm into the sociopathic time arts of what I like to call germ cell splatter punk, I have a good <laughs> attitude about it anyway. But. Um, I, I really don't like dynamic practical optimism. I like dynamic impractical optimism, which is maybe what we heard a little bit from, uh, was it uh, Peter Watts? I like that a lot. And a little from Anders too. I was actually enjoying it. Um, uh, my, Like I say, my media is life. And so I do things like run public laboratories on how to isolate DNA from all of these genomes at once. You know, in order to make it DNA that's um, incredibly useless for scientists, but really fun to throw around crime scenes. We would take all these different genomes and just blend them up and squeeze them out and using, you know, sort of normal techniques that anybody could do, mix them with soap and salt and um, contact lens cleaning solution, and even use our bodies to, to centrifuge out. This is the Whirling Dervis centrifuge. This was in Brighton. At, uh, I was doing something called Tattoo Traits with uh, Andy Gracie was running something called Laboratory Life. And we were actually allowed, as long as we didn't tattoo any vertebrates, we were allowed to go around in public with our incredibly hand sharpened with an emery board, nano single point tattoo needles. We were allowed to tattoo all life non-vertebrate in, in the gallery and around Brighton. We went around Brighton, we even got some muscles. We just had to avoid getting all the our, our newfound preteen friends tattooed with DNA. Um, does does hybrid DNA from 30 genomes um, get, if you sharpen single point tattoo needle with an emery board, do you, do you have the potential to get that hybrid DNA into the nucleus of the cells that we were tattooing? You see like, here is all tattooed on the apple. And these beans are magic beans we send people home with them. Yeah, it's possible it can get in. In fact, when you give a normal tattoo with the normal ink, mm -hmm. uh, we went to a tattoo artist and he said, it's kind of like bubble plastic. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, the way the ink gets to show on your skin is that it's stuck inside the cells, but the cells are still intact. In the nucleus, maybe what is raw DNA of 30 genomes without a transfectant, without a plasmid, do inside the nucleus of cells? A lot, maybe, or maybe very little. It's hard to say. It depends who you're talking to. If people that un understand RNAi and alternative editing would say a lot. People that say raw DNA without any restriction enzymes, nothing. You know. And so we got permission um, to do this kind of work all around town. Um, 
Oh, I do that. So let me just tell you one thing that pisses me off a little bit. And this is um, this is one quote from Nick Bolstrom. I don't disagree with everything he says, but um, he says, there may be some who would transform themselves into degraded post-humans. Uh, then some people today do not live very worthy human lives at all, like to begin with. Um, this is regrettable, but the fact that some people make bad choices is not generally a sufficient ground for rescinding people's right to choose. This is sort of the free, free market-driven, uh, you know, target group. You get, you get to choose. You can choose to be, to have your kids be transgenically lame or degraded. Um, uh, how do we say? Just as you would be allowed to choose your children to be not immortal, which is choosing that they would be decaying. Right? And I just don't, I don't want there to be an elitism built into transhumanism, if I can help it. Because I'm both a transhumanist and I'm a posthumanist. And these are sometimes used interchangeably, but they shouldn't be. Um, posthumanism is anti Enlightenment, anti anthropocentric. No, you mean postmodernism. No, posthumanism. And transhumanism, well, we can get into it. Have you talked, right? I mean, it, it depends on, like, Catherine Hale, Carrie Wolf's down in Texas. Yeah. It's like, they have a more animal rights, anti-anthropocentric um, decentering of the human subject before deciding where to go with ourselves, which I think is kind of fun. I mean, if we're going beyond human, we might as well let go of our humanism. Um, along these lines, control doesn't really exist in life. Life is not fundamentally controllable. If you're doing synthetic biology and it stops your, your machine, your genetically engineered machine stops working, you put it on bleach and you go get a fresh batch, okay? But life is filled with genetic drift. So if we try to engineer ourselves and we're not working the way we thought we would, how do we put ourselves on bleach? How do we ice ourselves and go back to the drawing board? I like drift. And in fact, what I'm advocating is not that we shouldn't do anything. It's not really that either you're with us or you're a bio-Luddite, but that we should go for the widest range of aesthetic bodies possible. And this doesn't just mean the widest range of beauty, but the widest range of feelings that a body can have. Aesthetics is not just good. And there's a lot of that going on here, this sort of like, we need to go towards the pleasant, or we need to go towards the better feeling, longer living, more beautiful, um, more stable emotionally. You know, no psychosis. Think of what's missing without psychosis. Oh, oh. So um, what I want is actually wide range feeling to be expressed in the human genome. If we're going for it, we might as well go beyond the standard trends of aesthetics. What are the standard trends of aesthetics right now? I'm gonna tell you a few of them. Um, number one, highest funded aesthetic when it comes to engineering new life forms is utilitarian. It is just an aesthetic. Use value, I think we, we already talked about this. What is use value? Uh, and for me, use value means pop art. It is what people want, but that doesn't always mean that that's good. It's actually a cynic, cynical product optimizer, or um, what do I say? <sighs> if we're going to be compulsively meddlesome, um, we might as well not just re-engineer organisms as artifacts of popular trends because in, in particular the human lifespan supersedes by far the time length that it takes for a trend to become passe. So we're going to have children that are born passe by at least eight and a half months, right? <laughs> and this is the problem if we're just going with trends. Now utilitarian is one thing and this is this is one aesthetic and what I would say is along the lines of of say, yes, okay, the animal studies posthumanisms, which try to actually rethink what it means to be human by trying to contact non-human consciousness, is that we need to contact our own non-human consciousness along these ideas of um, what kind of senses can we develop? Can we get those vibrosensors that sharks have? You know, and what does it mean to be a human with vibro shark sensors on your you know, in between each segment of your ribs. Um, what kind of husbandry aids are we going to need in the future when people are so diverse? Mm -hmm. um, 
Another aesthetic that's really popular that's well funded is health. And I think a lot of people know that the line between health applications and enhancement applications is skewed awry. Um, I have a problem with, in particular, the idea of enhancement. I like Andrew's distinction between enhancement and extension. I do think that question, I didn't stand up there long enough, but it was it's heartfelt. I think there's a real distinction um, insofar as extensions, for one thing, don't imply betterment. And betterment is a very fickle term. A very, very fickle term, and we've run into trouble with it before. I'm not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't try to do something good ever, but I'm saying that we don't really know what the future holds, and I, I don't trust humans for the most part. But in particular, I don't want us to be naive. Uh, I know Max said he's not a perfectionist, but some of the upload your brain thing, some of the we can become better leads to something like perfectionism to me, which actually it smacks of world rejection. And I don't know how to say this, but again, I love the body. I like being in this flesh. I don't mind becoming slowly retarded from being here on the planet. My telomeres are unzipping. I'm so happy to be earthbound. It's amazing that I'm willing to lecture. But <laughs> longevity alone is not enough. And in particular, I don't want us to, to become so perfect that we don't have orifices because they leak. And to optimize ourselves would be to stop the leakage, and that means both in and out, and we would end up inside of a perfect sphere as just mine, <laughs> and that's not it for me. That's not what life is for me. Um, that's me, though. I'm just really more interested in us rewilding ourselves, <laughs> right? Um, how do I say, um, we don't just need to reduce we need to actually let ourselves become more wild. Um, one thing that I would say is I actually like the arguments for fundamental research into what it means to be an organism in trans, transgressive, transmissive, uh, what's it called, transformation, right? I like jazz and I like improvisation and I think scientists and artists both use experimental play to find surprises. And that's okay. Um, in fact, a lot of my work is based on not having a concept and doing genetic engineering. At, and not just doing genetic engineering, but doing it in a way that's not just permutative or, or random, but actually, um, although not necessarily effective, because it's often do it yourself, at least I'm trying to do it in a massified enough way that something might happen. Um, I just want to see what crawls out of the bat. You know, I want actually a barrel of human female eggs that have been milked from old ovaries by spraying hormones on them. Stick them in the barrel. I want to jack off in the barrel. I want to mix it up. I want to add a bunch of mutagens, and I want to see what crawls out in that. Because my intention is, is deeply marred. My intention is, is biased. And I, I like conceptual art. Um, another well-funded um, aesthetic these days is defense weaponry, right? Super soldiers. DARPA's doing wonders with the human genome. They've been able to for at least 10 or 12 years, and that means they've been doing it for at least 10 or 12 years. I don't know who's going on Mars, but it's not a normal human on the Mars mission, and that's like nine years away, and they've got to be 18. So they're nine now. They're all Neil Armstrong clones with exoskeletons that are resistant to microgravity, and I'm not kidding. All right? <laughs> because those stem cells have been in space in the, you know, in the, in Skylab. Uh, but my slight problem with defense weaponry aesthetics is that it is this endless tap dance on human skulls. It's like, <laughs> na, 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 na. And, you know, I mean, getting back to, we'll get back to eugenics, but there is a reason that some of us artists are, even though we're engaging, we're also critical. Um, there is a reason to remain critical. It doesn't mean you're anti, it just means like, we fucked up a few times as a species, and maybe we could, you know, remember history a little. It's not just the future. Um, because pain happens, and some people are paying to make more pain happen in the world. Is there a conspiracy to make misery on this earth so that people will become more world rejectionist and try to lead to some higher ideal? Because this could be a really nice place. But, you know, if, if there's a conspiracy for misery, then we have to work actually on engineering that out. Maybe we could spread a virus that eliminates 
the genes for gullibility. <laughs> okay, so some not so funded, but I hope in the future will be funded aesthetics. I'll put my thinking cap on. What kind of aesthetics could we think of for the future of art and biology? Number one, I would say this, it's important that we use all the technology that there is to get the genes into the center of nuclei, okay? And these are transfection devices. Number two is we have to access the history of art. So to start us off, Rococo Biolistic Transgenic Arts, all right? And I'm sort of working on this, that's a gene gun? No problem, five minutes, yeah. Uh, that's a gene gun. Um, I actually got funding. Someone said, oh, we have some of my friend Tony Allard said, I, I have some friends with William S. Burroughs Poop. I said, whoa, let's get a gene gun and we'll shoot it into your balls, Tony. <laughs> and actually, uh, my sponsors are here from Grand Arts and they said, well, do, a, do an ethics report on this with video. And you've got the turn, we'll get you the gun. Um, and I have to say, we're, we're almost done with the video and we might, hi, Stacy, we might get the gun this summer and start talking about constructed painting uh, using William S. Burroughs microbiome and a gene gun. We do have our article on H plus about this, which gives the protocol, not just the protocol, but a lot of questions that we've had asked people already. We want some strong transhumanists to answer these questions. So get in touch with me if you want to be in the video. This already has gone viral, quote unquote. AOL News, um, the response by the scientists to some extent, that they said, oh, blah, blah. And even um, apparently, um, James Joyce is suing, the James Joyce estate is suing Craig Bentner. And they're sort of like, well, these guys got permission from the borough estate. A couple more minutes, so I'll give you a few things. Synchromism, electroporation, germline arts. I don't know what synchromism is, but I think these cat balls are synchromistic. That's an electroporator. It's the best, most beautiful electroporator in the world. Better than the cat ball art. Um, stem cell microinjection DNA op art. I mean, I only have a few more minutes, I'm sorry. But, you know, the idea is to get this op art into these two cell mouse embryos, right? Re-implant them in pseudo-pregnant surrogates and then end up with op art mice. Um, after this talk, I'm going, I'm going to Europe in about a week and a half to go present for biosolar cells. I'm the, one of their three artists on, on in, in their, what do they call it? in their corporate, sort of like, they have a better designer than me. But it's actually a green project for genetically modifying algae to make jet fuel. And I'm in with like BASF and Exxon and Monsanto and even, even synthetic genomics, which is Craig Bentner, right? And I'm coming at it like, what we've got to do is make people solar powered. Right? <laughs> because, uh, cuts out the middleman, right? And this whole idea of micro injecting stem cells with chloroplasts and putting it on people with male pattern balding. And I actually have been in Belgium with people micro injecting zebrafish embryos with chloroplasts, like the public. Mm -hmm. This is what I like. Okay? Get the public with a micro injector, foot pedal, pico liters of chloroplasts going into live embryos, mm -hmm. and you find out that. Most people want to do it. <laughs> like, it's not such a big ethical thing. And the fact that the mice end up looking like this, these are really weird mice, but they're solar powered mice with this op art design on them. Anyhow, I'm going to wrap up. You can tell, right, already that I'm kind of, I'm interested in the inherited case against art, living anti art. And the idea of engineering anti art is really actually a double bind. So I'm a hypocrite too. Right? Why would you try? How would you try to make something practical that is so unpractical? Mm -hmm. But um, we are in the third millennium eugenic husbandry bio art century, and I think it's important if we are utilizing um, not VR or um, how do I say <laughs> silicon, or but actually this is our new arena, right? This is development. And we're hitting, yeah. we're hitting it like uh, you know pre-sperm, oogonia and spermatogonia. These germ cells before they even get into a one or two cell stage. That we have to know that if we're reshaping ourselves, like this <laughs> deformed pheasant embryo that I helped make at University of Leiden with a bunch of students, that we are actually fucking the machine, right? And like I said, we're nature and drag. 
It's nothing that nature doesn't do itself. We're just, we're actually vamping, right? But it's pervy, all right? I'm okay with it, but it's totally perverted. These are some of the questions, and I can't really get into them, but they're online at the H Plus site. These are the kind of questions we're really asking about, whether or not we should be able to take William S. Burroughs' microbiome genes, and it's possible to get his genes, regardless of what some of the articles said. I talked to some people that got human genome matter out of 10,000-year-old copper lights in a cave in Oregon, Paisley Cave. And so an old poop from 18 years ago might have some stuff, but I'm more interested in things like what William S. Burroughs had to say about control or language being a virus, or Dr. Ben Wade, or whether or not enhancing traits based on human goals um, is preferable to just having a gamble in the dark. Because what's the difference in the long run if we're not profits? Uh, things like sex, scatological biopolitics, and of course risk. So I'll finish up with these last three slides. Is that okay? Uh, one is, these are, I, I usually say this is advice, but it's not advice. This is what's going on right now. I'm going to just lay it out for you, honestly. Right now, we're leaning on genetic determinism to help people engage in the process of understanding that they have a germinal choice we can sell to them. And I think that's okay, even though it's not true. Sociobiology is not true, but as long as we're pushing the idea that there's deconstruction in our genome, then um, eventually, in a deep eco ecological way, um, we can have people choose deconstructive genomes to save the Earth. Um, number two is that right now, bioethics committees are not stopping progress. They're giving a yellow light to progress all the time, which means go slow and cautious, or it means hurry up before the light turns red. And what they're doing is rewarding all sociopathic impulses because there's a seedbed out there to, to open up, right? And so don't bag on the bioethicists. They're playing ball, rubber stamp, all right? And so we have to just be honest and reward sociopaths openly. I'm one, so send me money. Um, and then the last thing that we're doing, I swear, is funneling funding to mutation as an aesthetic beyond intention alone. This is a back to what you were talking about, about extensions in. Is we don't need to have intention. We don't know what we're doing anyway in the long run. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just be disruptive and only benevolent in, in, in a perverted, contagious, virulent way? So I would thank you. This is my version of me as American Gothic. It's true. I'm an American. And that's art and gene action, pathways to expression.